A prototype from PXG. An affordable driver from PXG? Maybe. But will this lower price point mean a compromise in performance? There's only one way to find out. Yeah, back out on the golf course at Conway Golf Club and I'll be putting this through the fourth round I've played now with the PXG driver. I think it's really important, yet yeah, dry ball data will come later, but more importantly, I'll give you my opinion on how this thing performs in reality out here on the golf course. We'll talk about how it looks, how it feels. I'm also going to talk about the cost of it, but more importantly, how does it perform in the hands of an average golfer out here on the golf course in reality? Right, next up, let's talk about how this thing looks. And uh, when a PXG delivery arrives, it's, uh, it's pretty special. Uh, they box it up quite nice. Uh, there's a great deal of effort goes into the packaging, uh, but what's important is uh, what's inside. We also met with the driver head cover. The first thing you notice is, uh, is a mark of quality as well. This kind of leather or leather look at least, nice inside. But what's underneath then is this 0811 driver is pretty decent on the eye as well. It's very much in the kind of darkness theme. It's all greys and matte grey and black finishes with some high chrome thrown in there as well. And it's a, a decent looking driver to say the least on the eye from underneath in terms of shelf appeal. But for me, where it really stands out is at a dress. It's got a matte finish, an anti-glare finish as they call it. There's a simple X marks the center uh, of the club face from the top. But then this kind of dotted pattern that leads itself into that X is very good at sort of uh, framing the ball at address. And honestly, I think for me, from the top line, I said it with Gen 2 last year, it's the best looking driver at address that I've seen. Um, compare it to, I just want to bring in, let's bring in the Maverick driver as a, as a prime example, because that's the, the, the product that I've got in the bag right now. And again, whilst the crown is nice, uh, the carbon crown on the Maverick, if you put them head to head and against the PXG driver, I think for me, in a sunny day like today as well, you really see where that anti-glare and muted finish uh, comes into play. But to be honest with you, it doesn't matter how it looks, it's all about how it performs. So the reality is, how does this thing perform out here on the course? Because that's what really matters. We'll get to dry ball data at the very end, but ultimately, what has it been doing out on the course? Well, as you can see, I've played quite a number of rounds uh, around Conway, but I've also tried it elsewhere. And it's performed really well. I hit a couple of drives the other day. You'll see one on uh, 14 and one on 16. And to be honest with you, I ended up in positions I've never been to before. But maybe that was a bit of downwind. Maybe that was the best swings I've ever put on them. Who knows? All I know is this thing does perform particularly well. But for me, it's how we talked about how it looks. It's how it also sounds as well. And one thing they've done really well is the acoustics in this. Mike Nicolet and Brad Swiger did an amazing thing, the designers at PXG and the 0211 Irons, and they made a cast club sound incredibly good. Almost to me like what I would expect to hear and feel from a forge club. And I think again with the drive, they've done an amazing thing in terms of how it sounds. And ultimately that's what we talk about feel. Because it's almost, it's almost hard in terms of it's really firing off that club face, but it's got a soft, nice sound to it as well. And I think it's, a, again, an amazing achievement. I don't know how they do it. I don't really care how they do it, but I can assure you, acoustics is a major thing that they do very well at PXG. And like I said, the 211 iron and the cast iron, and again, they've done it with this driver. But let's see how we get on in terms of it and one with the camera switched on. Playing down 12 here, but quite a few down here over the last... Uh, few days testing this and that again is going to be a very very decent long drive I'm not sure and it's still rolling as well They're quite firm down here at the moment at Conway there's the camera I'm looking at the back one there Got a bit excited, found a fairway. And believe me, that's no easy feat at Conway at the minute because it's a little bit tight and the uh, rough is a little bit heavy. The ball, again, I'm going to do something very shortly where we're going to put a microphone up against a tee peg and see if we can sort of find if I can get you to hear how this thing is sounding and whether or not you picked it up on my microphone, I don't know. But again, like I said, an odd description, I know, but sort of hard in the, in the sense of, like I said, firing off that club face. 
but at the same time no big banging loud noise that's coming out and you've got that sort of feel that resonates back into the hands in terms of some feedback on the driver which is unusual right let's talk about the adjustability on this uh, driver well first of all there's two versions there's the 0811x and the 0811x plus which is the model that i've been testing and basically one is uh, the forgiving model which is the plus and the other is the low spin let's keep it very simple but I also like the way they've kept it all very simple in terms of the weighting system they've put in. There's no sliding bars back and forward. You've got four simple weight ports and one predominant weight, the heavier weight, is going to change the performance bias depending on where you put it. And you'll see a quick uh, graphic up in front of you now that explains exactly where those are. So I've got it weight positioned at the back for the more forgiving mode. Weight forward is the low spin. Weight heel is the draw and uh, weight toe is the fade bias so it just gives you an idea of just how simplistic that is and i really like that in terms of the hosel itself once again there's adjustability there ten and a half degrees is the plus model as standard and nine degrees is the uh, the regular x they both can be changed one and a half degrees either way in terms of the loft so really simplistic but perhaps very effective weighting system that can be changed up quite a lot and in terms of custom fit i think that hand it over to your pxg fitter and uh, let them make this product work best for you by changing around that weight system so if you're new to the channel i am the average golfer and i record plenty of content on club reviews and also some golf travel content but that's only if you continue to watch so please consider subscribing and uh, maybe hit that like button Right, so dry ball data, yeah, I've got it. And uh, basically it says that this thing performs really, really well. It hits the numbers it's supposed to. It ain't going to be 20 yards long because we know about the restrictions that are in place. I think drivers are literally at their limits, but it does as good as I've ever hit anything. It's 247 average on a carry. What was it? 24 spin launching at 13 degrees. I mean, the numbers are optimal numbers for me at my swing speed. It can't do any better than that. But the reality is, what has it done out here on the course? And like I said, that's where you really see the difference. A sterile environment is one thing, but out on the course is where it matters. Let's try another drive. That's slightly down the left-hand side, but the ball is going miles off the club face. Honestly, it is flying out. Right, 18th tee at Conway Golf Club and time for a, uh, a bit of a summary, I think. And uh, I'm going to briefly mention price because there's a big change in the price point here for PXG. They've bought this in in the UK at $520, US $495. Huge amount of shaft options included within that price. And all of a sudden, it brings it much more in line with the sort of mainstream options. If I throw these five drivers up in front of you now, we've got the Titleist TS uh, right the way through up to the SIM there at 449 from 349 at the Titleist. All of a sudden, yes, it still sits at the top of the tree in terms of our price point. But for me, if you're going to spend £400 plus on a driver that's going to last you five, six years, then I think realistically, you've now got to consider, do I spend that bit of extra for the things that you might like in the PXG driver? And those things were maybe not choices that you would have made in the past because at eight, nine hundred pound a driver, you would have completely dismissed it. I think in terms of performance and summary, it's performed extremely well. Like any other driver, there's no magic wands. If you put a bad swing on it, you end up in the rough. If you hit a decent ball, then this thing goes like an absolute rocket. Over the four rounds that I've played, it has really been consistently good in terms of its performance. I can't knock it at all. But for me, once again, and it's very much a personal thing, the looks element is superb at address, as is the sound and feel. I think it's awesome. Maybe we picked up on that. I tried to get some audio on that and the Maverick earlier. So hopefully you picked up on that. But as I say, real good driver, different price points altogether. And like I said, all down to the individual if you want to pay that type of money then it's ser seriously it's one that you've got to consider and put into the mix right as ever thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the review subscribe if you don't already and uh, hopefully hit that like button one more drive on 18.
that's a great ball to finish. I'll tell you what, this thing absolutely flies.